tried for winning, but very small. Eh? <laughs> Having said that, you know, uh, I'm really disappointed we lost. We lost the election uh, because we should have been on the other side to do a lot of goods. There are so many things that the nation needs, and it's in a very bad state. You know, health is not, it's still taking a bad state. Twelve years, and you can't even improve the incidences of NCD. Agriculture, we were promised about the um, revolution. <laughs> and you know, you know what? If we were there, if we were there, we will end all this. We will end the despair of the civil servants. Tell them. Tell them. We, will, we will announce to them, we will take away the despair of the real contract that is taking away their right, their, their, their workers' right. It's evil, you know, it's evil to impose a three year contract. Three years or five years. You know, if you were there, we would announce all this will go up. The education sector is in shambles. All that they can show is infrastructure. No quality. We have reached the one billion dollar mark in budget for education. But where is it? The outcome is what's important to see. The results are going down. And you're hiding that in your annual accounts. They don't understand that. So we are going to change all that. And uh, but we can wait. Okay. So we want to tell the civil servants up there, very sorry, we will have to wait with us again. We'll have to suffer the despair for another four years. And worst of all, you know, the Fiji Pine landowners. You know, the, the Honorable Minister should know. He was the chairman of the Fiji Pine Trust. He should know the extent of the exploitation that the government and the company was doing to the poor landowners. He should know that. But he decided to join the Fed Cats. He decided to join the bandwagon, and now he is criticizing them. You know what? And they are continuing to feed them scraps. We were there, the chair of the house. We will announce to them: you will now will become the owners of the company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, address his comments to the speaker oh. rather than to the minister. <laughs> just, just to. Just to make sure that you're aware of that, all our yeah. statements are made. Let me just repeat that. If we were there, on that side, we will tell the poor pine land owners, we will end feeding you with scraps and we will make you owners of that company, as was promised to them by the Tsar Kamishas mm. That's what they should be working towards, not feeding them scraps. So uh, to continue, uh, Madam Speaker, with humility, I thank God for the life of everyone in this house, as including you, that side, this side, Janet, Mr. Mosmalua, and even those outside. Yeah, because God is good, yeah, we should always, we should always thank God. And I thank Millie, my wife, for keeping me focused. Well, you too. Everyone. I wish to thank especially my campaign team managers, Gilbert Wakalalambure and Peter Naramba, both of Nateo village. But most of all, I wish to thank each and every of the individuals, 5,187 individuals who voted and trusted me with that, to be their voice in parliament. 4,206 of those are from Vanua Devu and the Count of the West, especially from the Vanua, Wakatura of Duku, Tete Viva, Sangani, Dawato, Patrova, Wairiki, Wailebu, and Nateo. Madam Speaker, allow me to mention the names of those villages with gratitude. So uh, thank you very much to all those wonderful villages from Yasawa, Nangasawa, Tawaki, Wainika, Wainangandu, Mbotini, Uruwai, Natuhu, Lakemba, Beungu, Sangani, Navatau, Malake, Onobo, Yasawa, Tongaviti, Kortasere, Balaburiki, Waturamulo, Sevadi, Baleana, Nerbale, Satulaki, Sueni, Matalolo, Dawara, Keka, Matu. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. Good people. Very good people. Not like you. Uh, Valeni, Nangagi, 
natua unda moli uh, na kasa leketi uh, walevu watiba na loloa na balbale nokumbolu na kwanga bangata wunibeshi na isali wondi it's good it's good people here i like you nandavadi usesivo na tewa dawa busa boda tukabeshi nandongo waliboni nadula mbatiri ene kutulewa yeah they do watch me there somewhere here i'll wait today there are madam speaker 62 villages and i wish that i wish in the three weeks of campaigning and stopping to sleep in many of them for the night those are the very highlight of my campaign sleeping in these villages joining these poor villages <laughs> to the 496 individuals who voted for me in the central division thank you for your trust and your mandate i thank also the 163 individuals who voted for me in the eastern division and 229 in the west and 93 by postal votes so to all of you 5187 individuals thank you very much for your vote you are the only reason I am up standing here in this house. Madam Speaker, let me now look at the, extra, the election results and the message that it is telling us. Well, I can't deliver the promise now. They have said, I told them we can wait even 100 years. But when it's been the truth, the truth will eventually prevail. You are a traitor because you know what the truth is and you're trying to go against it. So from the, from the results, Madam Speaker, I withdraw it. So, so please don't interject. Don't disturb me. Point of order. I think that is disrespectful and needs to be withdrawn. I'd like to withdraw. No, he's a liar. I know you're a liar. Can you just withdraw again so they can hear? Call me a liar. No, he's a liar. I withdraw. Yeah, I withdraw. Withdraw. Genuinely. So, Madam, from the, from, the, from the results, to me, the first clear message from the result is that the public does not want that side of the house. <laughs> we only have, we don't even have a majority. 50.02%. You should be ashamed. You should be humble. You should be humble by that. You should no longer be arrogant. And, you know, 147. 147. Post. So you are all a Mr. 147. <laughs> and they are here hanging by the skin of their teeth. <laughs> Only because of all the freebies and the handouts, mm. like the SME, mm. the agriculture care. <laughs> the agriculture care. What's that? The home care. The bus card top up care, the ITLDB care, and many other types of care. You know, money into over 100 million. And add to that, add to that, Madam Speaker, the use of government resources in all types of roadshows. And you can only get, you can't even get a majority still. You should have got, you should have had with that 51 seats. So where is the 51 seat? You become smaller. <laughs> you know, all these things were used by government to buy books. But the public are much clever now, considering the fact that there was no clear majority with only 50.02%, not even a majority, 147 votes. <laughs> Madam Speaker, with that result, the other side of the house must be humble and act accordingly, and do not ever show arrogance in this house. Very small. And the second thing that the election has, is telling me is that voting is still very much along racial lines. The Indofidians, for their security, voted for Fiji first, abandoning NFP and Labour. All the Indofidians, with the exception of those 147 or so, that voted for Fiji first, voted for the Sodelpa because they value their culture, their tradition, their group rights that is currently under attack by the Fiji First Government. The result tell me that the public out there are not embracing 
the Fiji first policy of equal citizenry that is devoid of ethnicity. Inasmuch as the government wants to impose those ideals through laws that dissipate and terminate the ethnic group rights and identity of native Fijian and policies that forbid ethnic benchmarking, the election result tell me that the public out there still feel safety and security within the ethnic group. And why not, Madam Speaker? Because the UN is telling us that your ethnicity is your human right. As a matter of fact, the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People confirmed that indigenous ethnic group rights have the right to maintain their ethnic and cultural group identity. Accordingly, UNDIP has confirmed up to 57 such rights, otherwise known as group rights, that are essential to keeping and protecting the group together under its distinct identity. Unfortunately, these are the very things that the 51st government wants removed from the Toki to destroy and dissipate their group structure and identity. These are now being imposed on native Fijians against their will under the 51st Sunset Clause policies that are manifested under a total of 23 what I call Sunset Laws and Sunset Policies and fortified ultimately by the 2013 Sunset Constitution. The way forward, Madam Speaker, is not equal citizenry achieved through the removal of ethnicity, but unity in diversity respecting the good rights of each ethnic group, not multiculturalism achieved through the removal of ethnic group rights, but multiculturalism respecting the integrity of each ethnic group. Madam Speaker, let me now turn to His Excellency the President's speech. By convention and tradition, the speech is normally intended to set out the government's program for the following year in a very objective and impartial manner. But his speech is nothing more, it was nothing like that, His Excellency's speech. Instead, it's like a big brother talking down to his subjects on how to behave and keep in line, yes. somewhat like Animal Farm. Take page six, for example, where His Excellency the President asserted big brother attitude saying, and I quote, I warned earlier this year that it would be tempting to descend into demagoguery. I warned against race betting, appeals to ethnic identity, and efforts to divide our people by telling lies. It pains me to say that some parties and politicians failed to heed my warning. We saw a political discourse descend into dangerous and hateful rhetoric, particularly on the topic of indigenous rights." Unquote. Madam Speaker, I want to say for the record that the one message I explained to all the villagers I visited during my campaign is that the Fiji government is attacking the ethnic group rights under its so-called sunset measures that are comprised in each of the sunset laws, sunset policies, and the 2013 sunset constitution. And I do not think I'm lying to them on that. Wow. Madam Speaker, I said to them that the sunset clause under its order is calling for the removal of their native cultural autonomy, or the Vanua, and by that, the removal of the group rights that are essential for keeping the group together and bonded in its distinct ethnic identity. Madam Speaker, I said to them, the reason why Fiji First Government wants to impose its sunset policies is because it claims cultural autonomy institutionalizes racism and therefore the need to remove it altogether along with any form of ethnic benchmarking or reference. Madam Speaker, I said to them that sunset policies has its footprints in all aspects and policies of the Fiji First Government, including the 23 laws that are specifically targeted to terminate, dissipate, and water down the indigenous rights. Madam Speaker, I, I said to them that included in this is the 2013 Constitution that removed the right of the GCC to appoint a president and also remove the right of prior consent before changes are made to their native land laws affecting native land VKB registration. So, totally unfortunate. That's why I'm calling it the 2013 Sunset Constitution. It was central in the Constitution was the removal of those rights that were there before, that were there from the deed of session. That was the reason why the High Chiefs 
that we listen to gave this land to Great Britain because they need the protection of that. And you felt it in your right to remove it. And finally, Madam Speaker, I explained to them that the sunset laws and policies are wrong. What laws? What sunset laws? Okay, let me, let me go. Let me, let me do that. In 1988, the first of these was, if you go, if you go in chronology, the, 19, the 2007, um, 2007 Great Council of Chiefs suspension regulation. That's one of them. What rights did that interfere with? It is the indigenous right to maintain their cultural institution. It is the indigenous right to get prior consent before changes are made. Then you have the 2008, 2008 Great Council of Chiefs amended regulation. When they cannot do anything to the Great Council of Chiefs, they amended the membership so that they can interfere with the independence. One of the indigenous rights of indigenous people is to maintain the institute independently. But that, but that amendment allowed the government to nationalize, to nationalize and decide who should be the chairman of the Great Council of Chiefs, who should be the members of them. And it has done the same through other amendments to the provincial councils. The government decides who is the chairman. The government decides who is the members. And it has done the same to the South Carolina Board. Now, the government minister is sitting as chairman of the NLTB. Now the government decides it, has, it interferes with their right to run their resources, to manage their resources independently. So all these, all these are there and culminated in the termination, termination of the council of chiefs. All these interfere with the indigenous rights to protect their cultural institutions, to have the management, independent management of the institutions. And you're asking me, what are these goals? What are these laws? Yeah. Well, I'm asking you, especially indigenous members of the house, if you know this, if you know this, and you still choose to be part of that, what can I say? What can I say to you? They are using you, they are putting you out as a native member, including they are using the face of the prime minister, a native face, to undergo this. But the speaker, let me now go to the night. 1987-2000 coup. I am sad that His Excellency has denounced only the 1987-2000 coup, but not the 2006 coup. I am sad because we are all legislators here, and we should therefore abide to the maximum that no one is above the law. A coup is a coup is a coup, committed by the forceful removal of a democratic government in 1987, 2000, and 2006, all come within the definition. I was hoping that His Excellency would be impartial and fair to suggest reconciliation by insisting that. I remember we are not able to hear you yeah. when you are quite we okay. give you extra time. Madam Speaker, I was hoping that His Excellency would be impartial and fair to suggest reconciliation by insisting that both the PM and the leader of the opposition make public apologies from the floor of this House to the victims who are affected by their actions and to the public at large for devastating done to the country. Now, it would be good that they jointly apologize from the floor of this parliament. I know that the leader of opposition has visited each and every individual victim that suffered as a result of his actions in the 1987 coup, even traveling overseas to do so. And I'm sure he's ready to make a public apology for the forces of But can the prime minister bring himself down to that, to that level and to admit he committed a serious wrong and mistake and apologize to his victims, especially the CRW wives and their orphan children. Yeah. Madam Speaker, at page, three, at page three, His Excellency says that the 2013 Constitution established our new democracy. I wish to say for the record that the 2013 Constitution was imposed on the population in silent protest and out of fear and duress. Can I also remind the other side of the House who appear confident that the 2013 Constitution is the final document that there is a decision in the Court of Appeal on April 2009 in the Bainamaram and Garase case that say that the 1997 Constitution is still the real Constitution. Can I also remind the other side of the House that there is also a 2002 decision in Commissioner for Revenue and Kroy 
where the where our civilization is said that the constitution is like a bible it is a living word and a document that can be trampled upon and torn apart but it will come back someday and all this is telling us that the 2013 constitution is not a final document and it's due for changes as it should and that it's only there because the Fiji first government is sitting there the moment you go out the next government will take it into account take it to task or amend it Madam Speaker, at page 3, His Excellency says, we have established institutions of state that remain fiercely independent. Madam Speaker, I beg to differ. Can we in this House ever say that FICREC is independent? Or for that matter, the Human Rights Commission? It is said that we established institutions which have been abused by the government. It has turned them into hunting dogs to hunt down dissidents, those that criticize the government, and those whose careers it wants to cut short. Madam Speaker, at page 5, His Excellency says, and I quote, I am proud to say that the Constitution grasps the strongest ever protection of Itauke land in Fijian history. Because of those protections, there is no way that Itauke land... Well, there's a lot more that I can say. So thank you very much. Merry Christmas to everyone. Honourable members, that brings us to the